Last week was my birthday, so I bought myself a birthday present. So yes, as I said, last week was in fact my birthday. I am now 24 years old. So I spent the weekend down in Hong Kong and I did something I rarely ever do. I bought myself a new lens. Now I showed you the lens up at the beginning. This is the Sigma 24 to 105 F4 DG OS HSM art series lens. Hell of a title, but I will get onto this lens. Um, I'm very, very happy with this purchase. Um, it's a really, really nice lens. For those of you that are already thinking, why did he buy this and not the Canon one? I will go through the pros and cons of why I bought this one as compared to the Canon one. I think this is a much superior lens. Let's just give you the short answer there. But before I get into specifics about why I bought this particular lens, let's talk about why I was looking at this focal range to begin with. Recently, I've been looking a lot at um, getting something that's a nice mid zoom range for me. I have also uh, my 16 to 35 lens, which I use most often. And you'll have probably seen that in a lot of my other videos here, uh, especially in the vlogs. That is my main go to lens for pretty much everything. And I also have a 70 to 200 lens, which I do use occasionally. Uh, I do like it. It's a very nice lens, but of course, it's extremely heavy. And at 70, it's already pretty zoomed in to begin with. And at 200, you can go pretty tight. But I wanted something that's more travel oriented but and also when um, you know when I'm not out trying to shoot wide landscapes and I need something that's got a little bit more wide coverage and this is what you get with a 24 to 105 you have still wide at 24 millimeters and at 105 you can get some pretty nice tight shots as well it's a great focal range and uh, I really I don't know why I didn't have the, uh, this kind of range before other than that I was really just happy with my 16 or 35 before and I was just happy with you know shooting wide but now now I've shot a little bit more I do need something that's got a little bit more of a wide to sort of mid rangey zoom range especially with me traveling and stuff like that I don't want to be bringing multiple lenses I want to be able to bring one lens and this lens will do it now let's go into the specifics of the pros and cons of why I picked this lens over the Canon one Okay, the first pro, this lens here is just a heck of a lot more sharper than the Canon one. I'm just going to be flat out honest with it. Especially in the corners, the Canon's, Canon's 24-105 f4IS, the kit lens that actually comes with the 5D3. Um, I did have a look at that before, um, but I just wasn't all that impressed with it. It is an L lens, but it's also probably one of the cheapest L lenses available. It's very plasticky, and especially if you look in the corners of shots, it's very unsharp this is extremely sharp for the corners when you consider the focal range that it is and even f4 it's still relatively sharp and if you bring it up to f5.6 you see a noticeable difference if you do the exact same shot when you compare it to the canon ones i saw some comparison shots with this and the canon one at f4 at f5.6 from wide to zoom and you do notice a significantly more sharper image all around with the sigma so i definitely was very happy that i saw this was a lot Lot sharper. There's also a heck of a lot less chromatic aberrations on the Sigma lens than there is on the Canon one. You do still get it on this lens simply because of the focal range that it is. At wide, you do still get some chromatic aberrations, especially on the edges at 24 millimeters. But when you start zooming in, it does disappear relatively quickly and it's quite minimal through the rest of the range. Compared to the Canon one, that is a lot do actually get a lot of chromatic aberrations, especially all the way through the focal range. You do notice it at 105 and 24. Of course, it is removed fairly quickly in places like Lightroom because it will do it automatically with one little click, but it's nice to know that this lens just doesn't have as much chromatic aberration as the Canon one. I was genuinely impressed with the autofocus speed on this lens. When I actually looked at this lens inside the camera shop in Hong Kong, I had it on my 5D3, and that is a, you know, it's not exactly the fastest autofocusing camera that's out there, but it is pretty quick. I wouldn't exactly call it slow. And when I had this on it, I was very impressed with just how fast it was focusing. And I was zooming in and out of the focal range all the time. And it was really zooming in and focusing really well. And it was, I was very genuinely impressed by the autofocus speed on this. Another big plus for me why I went for this Sigma one over the Canon version is that the thread on the actual end of the lens here is an 82 millimeter. Now that is all of the pluses and the thumbs up to me because uh, I have a lot of my filters for my 16 to 35 lens, like my polarizers, my ND filters, my Lee filter kit, all that stuff. It's all for the 82 millimeter thread on my 16 to 35 and it fits on this perfectly. So it means I can bring on my filters and do all my landscaping stuff with this lens still. And I actually have a couple of little projects and little shots 
workouts that I want to be doing uh, and this will definitely fit the bill and I was very happy when it had the 82 millimeter thread when I saw that I was very very happy and that was actually one of the pluses for me a significant pro for me for picking the Sigma lens over the Canon one. Now the Canon has this as well, but I also wanted to talk about it very briefly. This has OS, their optical stabilization. Now the Canon version is called IS, and that's great for video, uh, and also some low light situations, but mostly for video, and that's what I will be using this lens for. I have a couple of video projects lined up in my head that I wanna be shooting in the near future, and this will definitely come into play, especially if you need to do any free form handheld shots, that'd be great for this kind of thing. I was very happy that it actually included uh, optical stabilization as well because that was a big fear that the Canon one will have IS and this one wouldn't. So I was very happy that it has that. Compared to the Canon lens at 24 millimeters, this Sigma has a lot less distortion on the wide angle. You'd be very surprised. I saw some very wide shots of the 24 in the Canon and the straight lines are bowed back and all the rest of it. Now, of course, this still does have some bowing and it does do uh, some distortion because of the focal range that it is. It needs to go from really wide to fairly zoomed in, um, but it's really not as bad as the Canon one. And of course it can be corrected in Lightroom and stuff like that, but. It's nice just to know that this is a, this has a lot less distortion than the Canon one. It's just significantly different. Um, so I was very happy that it has less distortion. Speaking of Lightroom, I've mentioned it a couple of times in this video, this lens now also has a lens profile that came in in Lightroom 5.4, I think. So it's fairly recent. This lens came back, came out in October, November kind of time uh, last year in 2013. And it's only recently in the last month or so, we're now in July. I think it was only about two months ago that a lens profile came out for this lens in Lightroom. So that was, I'm quite surprised it took that long. I don't know, but um, happy that I actually got that. Uh, and that was a, it wasn't exactly a big plus, but it was good to know that there is now a lens profile for it. So it can correct all the distortions and stuff, as I said before, in Lightroom with one nice little click. One of the big reasons why I picked the Sigma lens over the Canon one is the build quality. This is built like a brick house when you compare it to the Canon one. The Canon one, although it is an L lens, it's very plasticky. It doesn't feel all that great in your hands. It's very strange that it is an L lens, but it's also probably one of the cheapest L lenses available. It is a kit lens after all. And it's not to knock it, it's still a decent lens, but when you compare it against the Sigma one, it's a night and day difference. And especially when you compare it in terms of build quality. This is full metal body housing. It's strong. You do get the feeling that this will be able to be you could use this as a weapon kind of thing. It's really nice and tough, but that does come at a price and that price is weight. And that is where we go onto the cons of this type of lens. So now onto the cons of this lens, and there aren't that many, but the biggest one uh, that most people will recognize is the weight. Uh, the Canon lens is around 600 grams, and this Sigma lens is near 800, 800 something. Let me just have a quick look. I do have it written down here on my screen. The Canon lens is 670 grams and the Sigma lens is 885 grams. That is a significant difference. But in what you get in extra weight, you do build up in build quality. This is a lot stronger. So although it is a bit of a con, it does weigh a lot more. Um, I, when I first picked it up, I did actually go, oh wow, that's actually heavier than I really expected it to be. Um, I was okay with that in the end because you do know, you, you get the feeling just by holding it in your hand that it's gonna be very, very tough and it will hold up against that. So it is a con, but I'm okay with living with that con. Now, one thing that I was a little bit bummed out that this lens doesn't have that the Canon one does is the Canon 24 to 105 has a weather sealed. If you actually look at the back of the lenses here, if you've got a nail lens, you know what I'm talking about. There's actually like a little rubber seal that goes around the end of it. And then when you attach this to your camera, it creates a nice weather seal. Um, now this lens, as I said, doesn't have that. And that is a bit of a shame to me because uh, I do find myself occasionally shooting in uh, drizzle and stuff like that. I've shot up in Scotland and uh, Europe before and you do just get rain around you and stuff like that but it's not the end of the world really I just have to be more conscious about shooting in the rain with this lens but you know as I said I'll just be a little bit more conscious about it so it's not the end of the world now a slight problem that this lens has as well as the Canon one is vignetting at f4 throughout the whole focal range it does have some vignetting at f4 if you actually compare the shots between the Canon and the Sigma one when you go up to 5.6 the Sigma one is actually a lot better at vignetting than the Canon one but, you know, as I say, Lightroom has got profiles to be able to fix all this kind of stuff. The distortion, the vignetting and stuff like that on lenses. It's very easy. It's a nice, easy fix. Uh, it's a bit of a shame that it does have vignetting. But as I said, the vignetting is actually better on this than on the Canon one. So that's kind of a con and a pro all at once. 
The one thing I am bummed about in general about this kind of focal range, zoomy, mid-range, zoomy kind of lens is that it does have uh, exterior zooming uh, when you zoom all the way into 105. Now, I'm okay with it, um, but I do generally like to just keep my lens one size. I've been, uh, it may just be because I'm really used to that. I've got that on my 16 to 35. It doesn't zoom in and out, you know, exterior zooming kind of thing. Uh, it doesn't have it with my 70 to 200 either, but I'm okay with that. Um, it's just that it's a little bit of a problem, especially when you get it. It can actually look a little bit long, especially when you've got your camera body here. It will look a little weird sometimes, especially if you've got the lens hood on it as well. It will start to look really big. And I'm not one of those guys that likes to make himself look really big with his camera. But, you know, it's still a con, but most, most, almost all lenses in this range have that problem. So that is it for this lens. As you can probably tell by the pros and cons, there's a lot more pros than there are cons for this lens. And even the cons themselves are not that hard to deal with, or the Canon one has it, or even in some cases, the cons on this are a lot easier to live with than on the Canons. Now, if you want to know more about this lens, a lot more in depth, go check out the F-Stoppers website. They did a really great in-depth review of this and it covers, you know, all the different aspects of this lens, the different f-stops, focal ranges, all that kind of stuff. They have some great on-image examples of all the stuff that I was talking about, especially like the edge sharpness and stuff like that. They do have great write-up on that and they really show a good in-depth review of this lens. It's a very glowing review, but also a lot of the cons that they mentioned I also brought up here. Um, so hopefully if you are interested in checking this lens out, I highly recommend you go check out the F-Stoppers review. I have a link to that review below. I see myself using this lens a lot in the future, especially because it covers that nice in-between focal range that I've been missing from my lens selection. Um, it's, I'm just, really just couldn't be happy with this lens. Um, I'm very happy that I got this as a birthday present and I managed to actually get it in store. A couple of the stores that I went to didn't have it, didn't even know what the lens was. And even the guy that I bought it from, he had to order it in. I had to wait a couple of hours, but still I couldn't be happier with buying this lens. I hope you've enjoyed this video and if you have, please consider giving it a good old thumbs up for me. Like, follow, subscribe to all of the socials down below. Links as always. And I've been Craig McCormick and I'll catch you in the next one.